And we start in Mpumalanga where the leader of the Democratic Alliance in the province, uh, Jane Sitole, says that they are concerned about the continuing culture of pouring millions of rands into projects that never come to fruition. She says that the DA in the province is concerned about the construction of the Mpumalanga Parliamentary Village, which began in November 2017 at an end, uh, with an estimated completion date of April 2020. Well, the project has been plagued by delay and is still not complete and its construction budget is also said to have ballooned from the initial 300 million to 550 million so for more on this we join on the line uh, by uh, the Jane Sitole leader of the DA in Mpumalanga Ms. Sitole thanks so much for your time welcome to Update at Noon Good afternoon, and good afternoon, Sakina, and the listeners. Thank you very much. So, uh, as you say, obviously of concern, uh, the ballooning cost mm. for this particular mm. project. But I'd like to go a few steps back and just find out what was the rationale for this project to begin with. Uh, if you look at the idea of the project, it was actually uh, uh, done on a very reasonable, uh, um, you know. Z- 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 reason, a reasonable reason why it should exist. Right now, members of the legislature in Mpumalanga are renting, or the, the, the government is renting houses all over Mbombela for them. So which means that they are paying uh, monies like now legislature is closed because of COVID and when we go on recess, they continue to pay rents because they are renting these houses from private people. And most of the houses are rented, of course, by 50,000 rent a month per member to to 50,000 a month per member. So it is a lot of money. A parliamentary village is a great idea, as we all welcomed it when uh, the idea was actually conceived in 2013. So that was the idea of having a parliamentary village. If you look, uh, a, a, a lot of people know that it's national because we always see that there is a place where all members of parliament uh, stay there. Um, you know, it's, it's um, the, the buildings belong to public works, and uh, I think they charge them like about 400 rand a month which saves government money in terms of accommodation, although those members, of course, are flying up and down. But with the legislature, other legislatures also do have a, 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 other, like a parliamentary village, which saves a lot of money because then government doesn't have to rent a place for you, which they pay even when legislature is in recess or is closed, uh, like right now, due, due to COVID. The rents must be paid. The, 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 those people are not renting it like on a month to month basis, legislature sign contracts with them. So it is a good idea to have a parliamentary village. Mm-hmm. Hence now, it is now becoming more problematic than anything because it's not coming to an end. And as uh, you've alluded to the fact that the costs have doubled and we are now worrying, you know, from 300 million to 550 million and um, it, it keeps on escalating. So uh, just on a point of clarity, is this parliamentary village uh, supposed to work on the same sort of concept as uh, the Akashia parliamentary village in Cape Town? Where, 100%. So, yes. so you would have the village and accommodation would be provided for mm-hmm. the various mm-hmm. MPLs. And mm-hmm. would you also then be provided uh, with cleaning materials, uh, domestic workers to come and clean, uh, all of that? Is it going to be premised on exactly the same concept as Acacia, for example? No, it will only be for uh, accommodation. Uh, the maintenance of the buildings will still belong to uh, public works, roads, and transport. But if you need a domestic worker or you must buy a, a, a cleaning material, uh, you're going to do it yourself as it is currently happening with the houses that they are renting for members. You get your own domestic worker if you, if you wish to have one. You buy your own cleaning material. But the, the, the building and the furniture and the maintenance of the building belongs to public works, which is now, yeah, belongs to government but the rest of the extra things um, it, it's, it's now whether you would like to have those things or not but um, they don't buy you uh, uh, cleaning materials and things like that but by the way having a parliamentary village will still save government millions than now uh, renting every house for a member, which uh, uh, the, the rents are quite high, if, if you look at the amount that's been paid monthly for each member. Mm. 
But 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 you know, with the trust <coughs> deficit, uh, you know, we're always skeptical when it comes to government and money. When you tell us they're going to save money, we wonder, we worry, uh, because mm-hmm. as you can see mm-hmm. now, as is the case right now, we mm-hmm. are talking about ballooning costs. So, how many parliamentarians uh, are supposed to be housed at this village? At the village, um, they, they, they were now making 31 units. We've got 34 members of parliament, including the premier and the speaker, and who will be most probably accommodated differently, as even now, the houses that they rent for members and, and the other uh, uh, members that rank higher, like the speaker and the premier, is not the same. So it, it will work uh, um, along those lines. It is, um, it, it is supposed to have 31 units, which um, then will accommodate almost all, all the members, except maybe those two or three, like the Premier who might not want to live with um, the rest of the people, but otherwise it will be able to accommodate uh, all members if it gets completed at any point, uh, because at this stage it's been a feasibility study after another, uh, which is just costing millions and there's no progress. So so is this basic accommodation? Because, uh, you know, if we're talking about a cost of 550 million already, uh, for 34 units, uh, well, that's not cheap. No, it's not. It's supposed to be basic uh, accommodation, Sakina. If, if anyone has ever been to Acacia, you will know that it's basic accommodation. It's not supposed to be a, a, a lavish accommodation with um, really a, any, anything extraordinary. It's supposed to be the, the accommodation, the idea of having accommodation or that government provides accommodation to members, it's for them to be able to get to Cape Town and work or, or to be able to get there and work. If you look uh, now, when Parliament is closed, the cashier is probably empty. You may find one or two members, but because government is not renting it from anybody, they are not uh, losing money at the stage when members are out of those houses, uh, most probably at home due to COVID or whatever that is going on. So that is why it is important that uh, they move away, particularly Mpumalanga, move away from this renting of private properties for members, because renting of private properties has also come with a baggage of the houses are not the same, because they rent from people that are renting their own houses, you know, so you will not have the same uh, um, uh, standards or even the same houses. So when you've got units that are the same, like Akashia, it's always as if like everybody gets the same, but it's not extraordinary accommodation, and that is why the costs are worrying. You, and, and that is why we've raised, yeah, we've raised it with the MEC, yeah, we've raised it with the MEC for public works now, that, you know, she must put a stop to the escalating costs. And uh, she has put now a new date for completion, which is October 2021. If you look at um, that it was supposed to be completed April 2020, I mean, um, lockdown started uh, like March 2020. So lockdown did not actually interfere with the inability to complete this project on time. Lockdown just really started a month before the project was supposed to have been completed. So now that she, she, she keeps, you know, they keep on putting a new deadline, new deadline. And that is why uh, uh, now we've requested the MEC and even the Premier, that the escalation of costs must stop. It doesn't match the work. If you look at uh, the amount now, almost doubling, it doesn't match the work that is going on there. So, uh, and, it's, and you know, in Mpumalanga, it looks like, you know, it's, it's just a culture to come up with these great projects like uh, the High Altitude Center or the School for the Deaf, where it's only feasibility studies that are happening and um, the, the work doesn't match the amount. Um, some of these projects never even take off and, you know, would have spent like 750 million, like the high altitude center that was supposed to be in Belfast. 750 million gone. There's not even a foundation. So if 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 we are carrying on with this culture of really just uh, announcing projects and announcing millions, but then you know ten years down the line that project is completed and the costs have doubled or tripled, it, this culture is killing uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, province. It's actually killing uh, uh, government because it does. May say that these costs are just like going to either feasibility studies or, you know, in, in some instances they even change the location in terms of the land. If you look at the school for the deaf in Pumalanga for the past 11 years, it has changed four times the locations. But the, it, it is still not there. The fact of the matter is you are spending money on feasibility studies. And mm-hmm. what, what, what is the benefit to the taxpayer? Like even it, the parliamentary let's, evidence. Let's talk the about the that. Is, is built with taxpayers' money. This is not money that just fall from somewhere. It's built with taxpayers' money and, and to now get to 550 million um, it, it cannot be acceptable. 
you even making me doubt my maths right now, Ms. Sitole, because mm. I actually thought, no, I must have put in an extra zero or two in this 500 million. You, I actually was sure when I, uh, you know, put it in and then I started <laughs> doubting myself because 500 million divided by 34, because mm. we're talking about 34 parliamentarians who will be housed here, mm-hmm. ultimately comes up to 34 million rand. If, if you look now, the, 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 the fence, yeah, the, the, the feasibility, the money has now gone to feasibility study, uh, the, 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 the installation of the bulk water services, which is still not complete, the, the erection of the uh, uh, fence around the village, which is still not complete. So the money... The, so you're and, still and on and phase one, one and is, two. Is the money hasn't even gone to building a unit that you can see that, you know, can this unit cost... So much. And when we say right now, I cannot say, you know, there is corruption or not because we don't have proof. But we did put it to the MEC that now this looks like a, a cash cow for some people rather than developing a parliamentary Fruitless village. and wasteful expenditure, Ms. Sitole. Mm. You mm. cannot justify 34 million rand. And I know not all of it goes to any particular unit. There mm. are the issues mm. that you mentioned, bulk mm. infrastructure, security and other costs. Mm. But if we are just working on it as such, saying mm. that this village is meant to house 34 parliamentarians mm-hmm. and you are building these houses. So it comes to 34 m- a million rand exactly. each. That's, that's that scary. cannot be justified to the South African public. No, it can't. And that is why we had to take it up. Because if you make the calculations, it's actually shocking. And um, it's taxpayers' money. That is why we had to raise it and say, this is very concerning. The, 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 the amount is just really, is ballooning. It's not even escalating. It's ballooning. And who is benefiting uh, from this? As I say, I don't want to run with something that I don't have proof of. But if you look at this, even anybody making calculations, you can see that, you know, uh, uh, something is wrong here. It cannot be that the, the, the costs are almost doubling and there is not even units that we can point at this stage. Also, phase one and phase two have not yet been completed from what I've been reading. Exactly. exactly. That's exactly our point. That, you know, the, work, the, the money doesn't match the work. It doesn't. And that is why so, it's extremely worrying. So, so I'm curious to know, in the meetings in 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 your sittings your parliamentary mm. sittings what is the explanation the explanation is of course the project delayed because there were community unrest and the project delayed because there were um, um, the issue of the land and the project delayed because the contractor was low and another thing that we are dealing with and i don't think it's only in impumalanga it's almost as if like there is no punishment for contractors that doesn't deliver you know, it's like, a, you know, I get a contract and I do shady work or I do half work or, or I'm slow, as they alluded to that as one of the things that has delayed this project, that the contractor performance was slow. But then who holds the contractor accountable if the contractor is just not producing or they're working at a slow pace? Okay, that's and a very curious question because mm-hmm. you are a member of the provincial government. You mm-hmm. are a member of parliament. If mm-hmm. you don't know, who are you asking, Ms. Sitole? Oh, I'm asking this to the MEC. In fact, I asked this to the MEC that who is supervising the contractor? Who is holding the contractor account- accountable? Because the Department of Public Works, Roads and Transport must hold the contractor accountable for delivery. But what are you doing as parliamentarians? Have you taken this up? Have you laid charges? Have you taken this up with the public protector? Have you escalated any of these matters? Escalating the matter is exactly what we did now. That is why it's now with the Premier and we've asked specific questions because that is our role to play that oversight, to say if this is the situation, and that is why you and I are talking about it now, because we brought it up to say this cannot be, this doesn't make sense that it, it is now for 150 million. And on our oversight to the, ex, the actual parliamentary village, that is why I can say to you that the work doesn't match the amount, and that is why we've brought it up because we did an oversight at the parliamentary village, and we've seen for ourselves that there's, there's something wrong here. This doesn't match what we're seeing on paper as reported by public works. And that is why we do have taken it up. There's something else wrong with your oversight mm. because you mentioned the issue of the land, mm. that there's now a dispute regarding the transfer of the land. Mm. How does the legislature, how does council approve payments on a project 
when you don't own the land on which you are going to build or you have a watertight agreement? Mm. Because I don't understand. How do you okay. use taxpayers' money to build on someone else's property? Okay, let me explain to you. The land was first donated. So the, the issue of selling it came later, and that is why there was a dispute. The land, when the report came to the legislature, to us, as you say, I am a member of the legislature, the land was donated by the Matafeni Trust to government or to the legislature. So the dispute came later. So we did not approve something that we did not have the land. There was an agreement to donate the land. And whether someone went and think about it again and the trust and whatever, then the dispute arose. No, but it the dispute mm-hmm. would not arise if you had the title deed to that land when you start building. How does council approve the building, the payments of hundreds of millions of rands? when you do not actually own the title deed to that piece of land. No, but Sakina, if some if if, if uh, someone comes and say, you know, um, um, so and so has donated the land for us to do this and and, and this project, how do you uh, question a donation? Or, no, no, no. Uh, your 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 uh, oversight uh, is defective, Ms. Sitole, because you are supposed to do that. You cannot. I mean, this is basic. Even Sakina, as a lay person, as an ordinary citizen, someone can come and say, Sagina, here's a piece of land for you. I'm not going to start building on that piece of land until I have the title of that land in my hand. Because I even know that someone can come back tomorrow and claim that land back because I have no leg to stand on. Surely that's the due diligence that council was supposed to actually undertake. That was your oversight role. And this is not just the MEC the no. ruling party, it's all of you in government, all of you sitting mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. parliament. Mm-hmm. No, no, you're, you're right. Everything that I'm saying from the beginning, I've been saying us, so I include myself in there. And that is why when we do oversight and all our work, we see ourselves as part of the legislature or part of the uh, wherever we are operating. So when the land was donated, uh, we actually relieved to that this land to build a parliamentary village. So the fact that we did not do a, 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 go and do a search for, for, the, for the title deed, and that's um, a, a different story. Maybe we should have done that, but the land was donated. Not maybe. It you should have done yeah. it. You sh- mm. It should have been done, not maybe. Not mm. maybe. Because now you are all complicit in the wastage of this money. Because if you do not own the title and the people are now demanding, how much are they demanding for the land now? 160 million? 113. It's actually bought now, yeah. So you spend 100 and so is that 130 million part of the 500 million we're talking about? No, it's, it's separate. The value of the land was separate. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was just because of the dispute. It resulted later. It came in later when the, the trust said, no, but you, uh, you can't donate some of the members of the trust said, no, you can't donate the land without all of us. So we are not, not donating it now. We're selling it. So it came in the middle of the process. So, so it's, it's actually yeah. 630 million as we speak. If, we, if you count the land, that's true. No, yeah, if that's, we, that's we true. have to count it because it's part of the cost to exactly. date. Where <laughs> you have not completed phase one, which was mm. uh, the um, electrification, uh, the fencing of that uh, particular village. Uh, you've not completed phase two, which was the bulk infrastructure. You have not even laid a foundation mm. for any of the units. And yet we are already on 630 million. So I wonder what sort of palaces you're going to be building here. You are 100% correct. In fact, I wonder if we're going to see a parliamentary village in our lifetime. But we are hoping that, you know, we, we will see one because it cannot carry on the way it is. So we'll keep on doing our oversight. We'll keep on escalating the matter. If we have to go to the public protector, so we will. If we have to, we, we do that all the time. We have to follow all the processes. If the premier is unable to, 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 to get this project moving, we will definitely move to the public protector or uh, uh, whichever chapter and institution that can intervene and and make sure that this parliamentary village is realized. It is our, uh, as I say, we supported the project from the beginning because, I- indeed, if it's completed, it will uh, uh, bring some relief to government paying rent all over uh, for 34 members. You can count 34 members, you know, with a rent of 40, 50,000 a month per member. It's still a lot of money monthly, mm. and now they're paying for houses that are empty because we are not even in the legislature due to the current situation. So, so we're paying uh, for houses that are empty. Yes. We are paying for houses that have not yet been built at a cost yes. of 630 million mm-hmm. and we are still paying 100% yeah. MPLs for, for wherever they are. Empty. 
that no one is living in them. Most of the time, not only now during COVID, that most of the time, no one is in those houses and we are paying for them. And we are paying now for houses that are not there, are invisible or, yeah, whatever the case. But that is the situation that we are faced with. I am going to park it there. Ms. Jane Sitole, thanks so much for your time, leader of the Democratic Alliance in Mpumalanga.